Welcome to the Family Accounting Webinar. In this section, we're going to cover automated billing and in particular, contract billing. So I'm going to start with the Adams family. And instead of processing things manually each time, I can take advantage of something called a billing box. And that's this money bag icon. And I have one for the child and there's one for the account overall. And I'm double clicking on the account one. This account has nothing going on in terms of billing boxes right now. So to get that started, I'm going to select the child because each child has their own billing box. So I'm going to say for Peter Adams and click on the billing box. And I'm just going to apply this to all schedules. And we're talking about contracts. So a contract is something I'm going to run periodically. And in this case, every week I want to bill the family. You might bill every other week. You might bill every month. So the first item is what ledger am I charging? And in this particular case, I'm charging the Adams ledger. On what cycle? Well, I bill weekly. You might bill every other week. You might bill every month. The cycles are just names. You can add cycles and change them if you like. I'm going to run this on a weekly cycle. He is a toddler, so I'm going to charge tuition toddler. This is my default amount. If I didn't want to charge that for him, and for some reason for him it's a different amount, I can just override it if I wanted to and save and exit. That is Peter's billing box. I'm going to do one for Wendy right now also so I can show you a discount. Wendy's the second child. I'm going to go to her billing box, and she is in the kindergarten room. So on the ledger, on the same cycle, I want to bill kindergarten, tuition, kindergarten, and I can leave that at the default amount. What I'm going to do that's different here is because she's the second child and my center has a policy of discounting the second child's tuition, let's say by 10%, I'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard and I open up another line item. And in this line item, I'm going to say the same family ledger, the same cycle. The description though, I'm going to use a credit description, not a charge description. And I think I've got one under F for family discount. I'm going to hit F. Family discount. Now that's a credit description. I could calculate this by hand here and just put $9. But maybe someday I want to change the amount that I'm charging everybody. And that means I'd have to change the discount. Instead, what I'm going to do is simply put 10%. And after that, not much matters. And what this will do when I hit the tab, is when we run this billing box, whatever it is that's on the line here, this will take 10% and apply it as a credit. So let's go run the automated billing right now. So Peter has a billing box, Wendy's got one. Now if I go back to the family, I can see that on a weekly cycle for Greg Adams, here's Wendy, Wendy's charges and credits, and there's Peter's charge line. Nothing has happened. We haven't charged the family. To charge the family, we have to do the following. Let's say it's Monday and we're billing ahead of time for the week to come. So if I'm doing contracts, I'd go to Functions, Family Accounting, Automated Billing, and we're going to be talking about contract billing in this segment. We'll click on Contract Billing. Select children enrolled as of. This is very important because if the child's not enrolled, we don't want to bill them. So in this case, I'm running it on 1030, so I can leave it at 1030. But this is really the segment of children that you're going to be billing. If you're billing for next week, I would make sure I have only children that are enrolled next week. And I might pick the fifth instead. But in this particular case, I'm running it for today. And right now that is 1030. What date do I want posted? So the contracts, you'll notice, just say to run it and post. Well, what's the date? Maybe I want to post this with tomorrow's date. So I'm going to pick the 31st. I'm not going to put a comment in. The default is include the child's name in the comment. And down below here, we've got all of the prior batches we did, and here's how you create a batch. I am going to do my billing. It's now Monday. I want to bill for the week that's coming up. I have my children enrolled as of 10.30. I'm going to post this as of tomorrow. I'm running 
all the enrolled kids who have a contract called weekly or weekly cycle. I'm going to click on next. Here are all my families. Just pay attention to the Adams. Here is Peter, and this is the tuition we're charging Peter. This is Wendy. There's the $90 along with the discount. I would then flag all of my families. Let's say I only want to do them alone. I could just flag the three of them. I could also alter this if I wanted to. So normally you'd pick all of your families and then bill them. I'm just going to process this so you can see what happens. I'm going to click on post. We're going to post $190 of charges, $9 of credits onto the account. I'm going to exit out. And here's the Adams. I'll double click. And here are the charges that I just finished doing. 1031 tuition toddler Peter. And this is Wendy's charge and her credit. So the total amount that was billed is the net of this, the 100 the 90 and then the $9 off. And I'll click exit. I want to show you a charge for the divorced family example, and that's Bundy's. And Bundy's account is a little bit different. So we're going to go to Bud's billing box. It doesn't matter whether it's a, we're viewing Peg's account or Al's account. It's the same billing box. So for Bud, here's what happens. Every time we run the weekly cycle, we are splitting the tuition between Peg and Al. So I'm going to run automated billing. This time we'll pay attention just to Bud Bundy. And I'll do my functions, family accounting, automated billing, contract. Weekly. We'll do the same setup as we just did. Let's post this as of tomorrow. I'm going to click on Next. And let's just look at the Bundy family. Here's Bud. There is the split charge, partly to Peg, partly to Al. As you can see, they have nothing on their ledger at this point. I'm going to post just those two items and exit. And there is the $95 on behalf of Bud, charged to Peg and on behalf of Bud, charged to Al. So that's how to handle a divorced family also. If you ran a batch twice by accident, that's why we have the batch button. So let's say I had somehow billed, or maybe I had just wanted to cancel out the batch I just did. Instead of having to void 50, 100, 200 charges, I'm going to go right back where I was. Functions, Family Accounting, Automated, Contract. These are the two batches I just finished doing. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the batch. This is the Bundy example, I believe. And I wanted to void those out. I can just double click on that batch, click on void batch, and just void the entire batch. Maybe I'll say it's a test posting. And you'll notice what will happen is these accounts will not have been charged that void batch. Am I sure I want to void? Yes. This turns to pink because it's a void. The batch is now noted as a void. And when I exit out, the void has been applied to each of the accounts. If you had Tuition Express for electronic processing, after you did your batch billing, you could immediately turn around and run the Tuition Express batch process to collect all of those monies. Again, if you're interested in that, contact Tuition Express through ProCareSoftware.com.